Hello everybody, this is Frogman. Welcome back to Serious Engineering. Yes, I know it's been a week. We've been kind of kind of had a really rough week last week. Work was crazy and busy and we were short-handed, so I had very little time to do most of what I needed to do. And plus we had a uh well, I guess those of you that are paying attention to the Discord had a family emergency where my son managed to hurt himself well enough that he uh had to go to the hospital, but he's perfectly fine now. He just uh blacked out and kind of fell down and hurt himself, so um, problems of growing up as teenagers, you know, you, you stand up too quickly, your blood flow isn't quite where it needs to be, the poor little kid's grown a foot in the last year and a half, so, you know, things happen, he's alright, he'll be fine, he's just going to have to take it, th life a little slower and realize he can't, uh, you know, just jump right up and do things first thing in the morning, so I have done a little bit of work in between episodes, I've kind of almost completely forgot where we left off, but we do have the nice little power plant system going on, and I have a little bit of power lines running around in an ugly little building that I kind of built around the... Uh, whatever, whatever we call this little process over here at this point, the system that takes water and turns it into distilled water. I have routed the output of salt into a trash can from all of the distillers because we don't need the salt right now, so that's fine. And that's pretty much all the stuff that's gone along. I've added a road out here to kind of tie things in a little bit, and there is a little bit of work going on over here that we're going to discuss about in just a second. So let's do that. And we can start talking about what we're going to work on today. So we're going to need to be able to still be processing our plastic system going forward. So we need to have to, a decent way of making a lot of liquid plastic and get rid of all of the fluids that we have. So we have a little bit of leftover stuff. And of course, I have all of the parts pieces that we had sitting out here torn down at this point so that we can kind of work a little bit. And I've laid out a little bit of a footprint here that I figure should be pretty close to the size that we need. I've already kind of built it once or twice, so I have an idea of what I want and what I need. So what we want to do today is we want to take the refining process where we're taking oil from immersive engineering and turning into diesel, kerosene, and gasoline. And we want to take all of these liquids that we have here and we want to process them all the way down to at least LPG. So let's see here, refinery. If we look at this process here, we're going to get all four of these liquids coming out of here as well as the, you know, basically this is what we're going to end up with. So at the end of the process, we're going to get LPG. We're going to get a lot of diesel, a lot of kerosene, a lot of gasoline, and a little bit of LPG from what we're doing with this little process. So what I want to do is I want to take all of those fluids that we have left over that we really don't have a use for and convert them into LPG so that we can turn it into plastic. So let's grab our little build box here and start with the process as we already know it to be. So I believe I had this kind of light up kind of like so. We're going to have to kind of fiddle with this again because I have to remember of how much space I did, but I believe it should be about like that. And we can get that. And that's our refinery. Again, we're, we're going to use the same process that we had before. And then we're going to add a little bit more parts to it. And I do not need those seeds. Thank you. We're going to grab a couple of those and a couple of these and a couple of those and a few other things. We're actually going to put this to use this time because we can actually use it to kind of help cool the process. And I'm going to need a bunch more junk and these special little things here plus some of that and this and a few of those so that should actually be enough I think we have plenty of stuff let's just go ahead and do that and that for now and I want those all right so we know that the refinery needs heat to work so what we're going to do right off the bat is we're going to do something about like this now we need to be able to make the heat happen. So can I place those that way? Or am I going to have to wait? Nope, we're going to have to do it this way. Okay, so we're going to use four vortex cubes, or vortex tubes, so that we can produce the heat that we need for the refinery as well as the machines that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using some 
compressed iron blocks to help distribute the heat across as well as store heat. So what happens here is, if you don't know, you can spread heat across multiple machines using compressed iron blocks and multiple vortex tubes. So I could technically heat these iron blocks with just one or two of these vortex cubes. But we need a lot of temperature to do the process that we want to do. So we're going to use a bunch of iron blocks to help collect and spread the heat from the vortex tubes to the machines that we need to spread the heat to. And those machines are going to be the thermopneumatic processing plants. And I saved that guy for the end because this is the one we're making plastic in. So this kind of a process is somewhat similar to Factorio and Manufactio for that matter. We're going to take the outputs of the refinery, hello emails, and we're going to store them for a little bit and then immediately crack them or process them into the lighter variant until we get to the end, which is going to be the LPG. So we're going to do that with the thermopneumatic plants. And thermopneumatic plants require two things. They require air pressure and heat. So let's go ahead and hook these up or at least get them started. And we need to figure out, or should say, we need to lay down some air compressors so that we can actually process this stuff. So we're going to put an air compressor like that and an air compressor like that. Now these guys, as we used them before, create heat as we use them, or as they're running, they create heat. And this is probably about the one and only time you're ever going to see me use a thermal compressor. Because a thermal compressor is, it uses the difference between two sides or four sides as far as a heat versus cold. So if I take a heat sink and I put a heat sink on this side and a heat sink on this side, I now have a temperature difference between these two sides. So there's going to be a hot there and a hot there and a somewhat cold and a somewhat cold here. What this is going to do is it's going to try to equalize the temperature between the two and use the heat up in the process to create a little bit of air. So these two compressors, we're going to connect them kind of something like that and like this so that we can get this guy connected. He's going to make a little teeny tiny bit of air. He's mainly here to keep both of these two compressors cool and as efficient as we can get them. We're going to go ahead and toss a couple of those in here and we're going to start the heating process because it takes a really long time to function. So for right now, we're going to put that up on there. And you can go to there and you can go to there. All right, cool. So we should now be producing air pressure. And I'm going to make sure we have a couple of these over here. Got our heat sinks on our vortex tube so that we have a difference in temperature between two sides. So because of the way I have this lined up, we're going to have the heat being applied from the bottom and the air pressure applied from the back. So the end result, again, is that we want to be able to store our plastic. So I have all of the plastic that I had stored up and made ready to go in this tank. And again, we have a bunch of tanks over here. I've already pre... I don't know if I can get up there. Eh. I don't think I can get up there. Let's do that. There we go. I've already pre-programmed these fluid routers from Immersive Engineering because we're going to need to be able to designate where the fluids come out of this and then eventually move them down there. So I've already got them designated by choosing a bucket of specified fluids and put them into the filtering sections in these guys. So what we need to do now, I guess, since we're up here, is we're going to run a line. I'm going to hope that this pipe is going to react well to these things. I have played with them a little bit and it's kind of a six to one half dozen the other it's going to work kind of thing so what we do want to do is we want to be able to pull the diesel fluid fluid fuel that this this and this out now i'm going to actually remove that one i should say because this is going to go out the back into the rest of the system hopefully i've only got three tanks and i'm hoping after a while that we won't even need these tanks because we will either be filling that thing up or we'll have one tank that is going to be holding the LPG because these these guys right here should be, these, these plants should be able to process things reasonably quickly. So let's go ahead also while we're here and hook up the oil just so that we know where the line is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and put that back because I do not want it connected and I'm going to hope that it doesn't do something stupid. And can I reach it? All right, hook these up. 
and awesome. Okay, now that should work. We're going to take the direct this. We're going to take this line and direct it straight into this machine over here eventually. But for right now, we're just going to leave it alone because we need to put a few more fluid routers on the top of this little assembly here so that we have a way of designating what goes down into the plants and I think we're gonna go ahead and run that out right now while we're here so that's going to be the output for the plastic if I can get back on top of this tank I need more pipe that's why we made some pipe thank you can I reach it okay cool Alright, so that should be pretty much what we're going to need to do for that part. And I'm waiting on the heat to come up. As we can see, we're at 106 at this point, so we're doing fairly well. How are we doing back here? This probably will not be making a lot of power as far as power. Air pressure as far as things are concerned, because we can see the de temperature difference is not a whole lot between the two sides. What I'm hoping is, I haven't really tested this, what I'm hoping is, is this is going to maintain a reasonably low heat value in these two generators and just eat up the heat and, and get rid of it without us having any problems. Now I could send the heat into this block, but the thing is, is that block, I eventually want it over 300 degrees Celsius. I want it really, 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 really hot. And I don't want these to be really, really hot because they'll quit working. Okay, so let's work on the output for the two tanks, the three, three things that we need over here. So I should be able to run this over this direction and down to our storage tanks for right now. I'm going to use the immersive engineering pipe for a reason because they tend to work a little better with the <laughs> these things, the fluid routers. And I don't have any levers on me. That was the one thing I knew I needed to craft and I didn't. So do we have any levers in here? I need to look in the right box. Yes, I have three. Just give me all of them. And we can run over here and put some levers on the backs of these tanks. Nope, not there. There. Good. Good. Okay. Bucket, bucket. Who's got the bucket? Where is my bucket? There's a bucket. All right. So the first thing that I want to do, again, is we're going to set this router here on the bottom to diesel. So diesel is only going to be allowed to go into that one. Kerosene is going to go into the next one. And the gasoline is going to go into the last one. And we're going to take a nap. Because I've already been tried to be beat up a couple of times. Okay. So that means anything that comes out of this, as soon as we turn these on, they're going to be pumping the fluids that we need into these plants. So actually, I should be able to do that right now. And we can see the diesel fuel coming in and the kerosene coming in and the gasoline coming in. As we can see, we're going to need at least two bar on the pressure and we need 300 Celsius to turn these guys on. So we have to wait for this to warm up. Now I'm going to hope again that these are going to be enough. If not, we can always put a little bit more of the speed upgrades in them. And unfortunately, the speed upgrades are actually made, I think, with the lube. We have to make lubricant out of something. What is it? Lube. Lubricant is made how? In the squeezer or the, the yeah, using the diesel fuel. So we could easily pull some of the diesel fuel out again and we can just toss a little bit of that stuff in here to make a little bit more lubricant if we needed to. I don't have the output set on these yet so we're going to again do something fairly simple. My email is going to be exploding today. I love it. And do like these and disconnect because I don't want, I want to be able to see them. You don't have to disconnect them. Do that that and that so we don't have a connection there thank you all right and then we can go ahead and glass the face of this up so that it looks pretty and I think I can get one right there and I want one on top we have two spaces in behind that we need to make sure we cover so that they don't cause a problem with heat loss 
which is probably why we're having a little bit of a problem as it is, because this thing is leaking heat, so now we should start gaining quite a bit. Put those away, we should be good. Oh, and you need your thing. Where is it? That dude. And that's how I'm going to feed the colon. So that means every single one of these blocks has all of their sides covered, so they shouldn't lose any heat. They're still readily accessible, sort of, kind of, like that. And once we get a lot of heat in there, which we're coming up rather nicely, we should start processing all of that fluid into another type of fluid. So what's going to happen, this is going to crack the diesel into the kerosene. Kerosene will be cracked into the lubricant, or the gasoline, and then the gasoline will be cracked into the LPG. Now we do have a problem here, whereas we're going to have to pull LPG out of the system and put it back into this here. And I'm surprised I'm not getting burnt by standing on this, but whatever. We need to be able to put that back into the system. So we're going to be pulling LPG out of here, which I actually need to not do this right now. And I think what I want to do actually is we got all these fancy little toys. I'm going to put a transfer gadget right on the side of this one. And that should transfer the LPG into that as it gets it. So once we warm this up enough, and we get enough air pressure, this will automatically transfer its LPG sideways, which is what we want. The other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to pull the top position, or the top part of the LPG, and put it into that over here. So I should I think what I want to do, actually, is probably just do something dirty. Can I connect you? And do this. No. Okay. Cool. And go. And hopefully that will work. We'll find out when it does. Anyhow, we have a little bit of time to play with here. We're going to see. We're getting a little bit 52. As long as it hangs out right there, I'm going to be happy with it. And it like if this makes any pressure at all, which it's probably barely making some pressure, we should be good. So as long as our pressure continues to rise and our temperature continues to rise, which it doesn't look like it's going to because we have so much we need to heat, I can probably get away with half of the vortex tubes. Probably. Because we're using a lot of air pressure. Basically, I want this system to sit here and run and not need to be regulated. I don't want to have to touch it. So we're going to need to make sure that we have plenty of things going. So let's borrow a little bit of redstone. One, two, and see if we can't make two more speed upgrades for those compressors. Which I should be able to do right here. Diesel fuel, redstone. You, and we need a speed upgrade, which is just sugar lapis in two of those buckets, which we have plenty of that. So let's see what we can do. And basically, again, all we need to do is just get the power pressure, pressure and the temperature up to levels where it will run properly. And we can turn the system on and make things work. So uh, we need about eight of those. And where is my sugar? I knew it was over here somewhere. Speed up. Great. Oh, yeah, that's right. This. <laughs> Whatever. We can do it the easy way. There we go. One and two. Give me my buckets. If I have to make more, I can. We have plenty of diesel fuel. So you're going to get another one. Now that's going to make it use a little bit more RF and it's going to make a little bit more heat. But we're going to have to sit here and kind of play with it. So what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to uh, sit here and watch this stuff. And when we get to the point where we're about ready to fire these guys off, which is going to be fairly shortly, I will bring you guys back. Alrighty then, looks like we've reached the temperatures that we need. We're getting well over four, almost 400 
which is excellent. That means these are going to run fairly quickly. And we just reached the pressure differential that we needed, or I should say the temperature where we, or the pressure where we need to come up. And I went ahead and stuck another speed upgrade in both of these two generators, so we should be okay for a little while. Um, we're going to have to, again, watch this process, and basically what I'm going to do is augment or, or just very, very how quickly this thing works by removing the speed upgrade, like that th the third one, if it's too much, we can continue on. But we are now cracking the various fluids that we need into the other fluids that we're going to need. And again, we did go ahead and put the transfer gadget on this one over here, so it is now pushing the LPG into this side. So eventually what I'm going to do with this whole system is when we drain all of this fluid out of these tanks, when we process or cr crack it all into what we need to do, I will be putting transfer gadgets in between each one of these so that they just push the chemical sideways until they get to the end of it over here. Uh, there are fluid-based versions of these compressors, which you can use, and if we need an excess of, or if we need to make an excess, or we have an excess of the LPG, it's a good way of getting rid of the LPG. I want to fill this tank up full of plastic first. So, uh, alrighty then, let's flip that up. I need to remove this piece of glass and this piece of glass and put these two pipes back so I can see what we are doing. And we're going to disconnect them just for the pretties of it, and you can get dropped and you can get dropped so that will push that back up into these two tanks we should be filling this one now i think hopefully oh dang it don't do that not with that okay that drained that and that drained that good deal let's take a nap and we can kind of fig watch everything else work Okay, cool, cool. So that should be functional. These should be going up and going down. We're probably not going to be able to see it very much because they're going to, yeah, it's going up. And you may be going up or going down depending on how things work. I want to drain these tanks before we turn the refinery on because, again, like I said, I basically want to recycle whatever comes out of here. Eventually, whatever comes out of the refinery is going to get plumbed right into these routers here so that we can work with what we need to work with and not have to deal with all this extra stuff. These tanks are temporary for the time being just because I had a lot of stuff. So let's do this. And I don't have any coal. Did I bring any with me? No. Nice. Wonderful. And this eats a lot of coal. So we're going to grab... Sure. Boing. Toss that in here. And that should start making plastic for us. Liquid plastic. Very good. So I'm going to have to monitor and maintain to make sure that we don't go over the limit. I don't feel like putting... I don't feel like basically putting the security upgrades in the or the uh, compressors because it's just a waste of air and energy at that point. If I can manage to get them to where they'll sit there and run, if it stays right at three, that'd be perfect. Temperatures are nice and warm. Those blocks are nice and warm. Hot, rather. Staying about three. Perfect, perfect. When we fire this off, it's going to go absolutely crazy quickly. Actually, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it does since we have a little bit of backlog over here. Very nice. Okay. So I should be able to, again, unhook or turn all those on so that they drain. And I can put that over there. That should drain everything out, except for maybe that one. Oh, right. Can I get a bucket of LPG? We're going to have to wait for that to fill up so we can get the bucket, but that's all I'm going to need to set that going on. So, cool, cool, cool. All right, that'll all work. We have our little plastic mixer here so we can make as much or many of the things that we need to do. And hopefully, like I say, this is just going to sit here and hang out about right there, which it appears to be. That's perfectly fine with me. We don't need to be running these at five. We don't need to try to max that out. If everything's just going to sit right there and do that, we're good. So I think that'll do for now. That looks reasonably decent. So let's see. Have we got our bucket yet? No, not quite. 
See, and this is the funkiness that happens with these. Um, sometimes they don't want to talk to the the routers. I've actually had to do goofiness with this here where I had a, uh, a tank in line in my test world. I think I had an extra tank in line up here that allowed these to deliver into the tank because I think they can only do one fluid at a time. But give me my bucket so I can set this. Yoink. And you can go in the bottom there, and that can go in that. Are we draining now? No, we are not draining. Why are we not draining? Yeah, these pipes aren't the greatest pipes in the world. They're kind of eh. So, do we have a tank? I should have quite a few tanks. I guess we'll just use that one. Since we don't need a massive tank, we'll just put it right there. Right there. And then this can do that. We have a clog over here for whatever reason. Huh. I don't know. Right. Up. Where not that one. This one. There we go. Why are we not working? Kerosene's working. These pipes. I'll have to fiddle with that a little bit. They don't care for the, uh, they don't care for the the filtering and the, the way this stuff works. And I have to keep some kind of a semblance of a buffer until this is all gone. But again, this is this whole section is temporary. We will be running all of this all of the outputs back into these routers so that we can fill up our machines as we need to fill up our machines. So I think we'll be okay for right now. I'm going to have to sit here and babysit it anyway so that I can get the rest of this sorted out. And we have to make sure that we're doing, yeah, I need to get it under 50. We may have to do a little bit more fiddling with these, which I should be able to actually do with a couple of more heat sinks, but I don't think I can put one on that side. I think I can put one right there. Oh, yeah, we're getting a little hot. So, anyhow, I think we're going to do a call it right there, guys. I'm going to continue to fiddle with this, and we can continue messing around with other things. That's just a block pipe, and I know it is. So, I think next episode we're going to start messing again with our villagers. We haven't talked to them or messed with them for quite a while, and we need to kind of get them up and moving a little better. We need a, we need a, what is it, a barracks, and we need some defense because I keep having to deal with the raiders coming through. But for now, I think we're going to call it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.